Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to a series I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. This is the 3D Game Engine Development Series. Now this video isn't actually going to do any development. It's just going to be the FAQ video where you can go down to the comments and post absolutely anything you want to ask about this series, and I will personally come in and answer it for you to the best of my ability. Now, that being said, there are five questions which I've come up with, which I think either I'm going to get asked at some point, or it's probably something you might want to know. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that in this video, plus there's a little bit of trivia. As you may have already noticed, my little example scene I've got going here is made up of a few example assets that are sort of signature to a few particular tutorials on this type of subject, or similar subjects. If you can name all three, congratulations, you've just won bonus points. Oh, and just to show you, this is my sort of example scene. It's just the bunny and the lights. And I implemented the free-moving camera, just because I know someone asked me about that. And it's got nice, smooth 60 FPS, which unfortunately I can't show off because of... Well, my screen recorder doesn't exactly agree with my game engine, but hey, that's alright. So yeah, you get the idea. Anyways, on to the FAQ. Question 1. What is a game engine? At least in terms of what you're going to show in the series. Well, I'm going to try to show a game engine to as accurate as a definition as possible, which of course it's going to be difficult considering a game engine by nature is extremely hard to define. But here's sort of the definition I'm going to be going on in the series. Imagine you have a folder on your computer, and in this folder is all the data about some game. All the models, all the AI script, all, all the everything. <laughs> all the data is in that folder. The game engine is a piece of software that can load in all that data and present the user with a playable game from all that data. That is the definition of the game engine that I'm going to be going with in this series, and that's what I'm going to be attempting to create throughout this whole series. So, yeah, that's my best definition. Again, game engine, really in-depth subject, really hard to give a good definition for, but that's sort of what I'm going to be going for. Question 2. What language or software or tools are you going to be using for the series? Well, I'm going to be writing the game engine in Java using OpenGL 3. That's not exactly a requirement, though. I'm not using anything that strictly depends on Java. If you know Python really well and you want to do it there, or if you know C really well and want to do it there, or really any language that supports OpenGL, you're fine. You can use that. It's not dependent on Java. It's just you know, my preference for doing it. As for, like, libraries and such, I'm using Lightweight Java Game Library pretty much just to access OpenGL, so you're not going to be missing much there. It does provide a few facilities, but I'll talk about that when I get to it. The only thing you may have some issue with is I'll, I'll be using Slick Util for texture loading. Now, obviously, if you're not using Java, you don't have access to Slick Util. But, you know, you didn't come to the series to learn to load textures. There's a lot of stuff about texture loading, so use whatever texture loading method makes you the happiest. So, yeah. As for software, I'm going to be writing all my code in Eclipse, but, again, it doesn't matter that much. Write in whatever way makes you happy. The tool isn't a requirement to actually create the game engine. And finally, to a much, much lesser extent than everything else in the series, I'll be using Paint.net and Blender to create a few example assets along the way. Again, you know, if you don't want to create the example assets, it doesn't matter whatsoever. So, don't even worry about it. But, yeah. So those are all the tools I'm going to be using. You're pretty much not going to be screwed out of anything, unless you really insist on not using OpenGL. If you insist that, then you're going to have a problem. But other than that, you shouldn't have trouble following along with anything else. Question 3. 
Are there any other requirements or considerations for people following along? And really, that's almost everything. The only other thing you might want to consider is you need hardware that supports OpenGL 3 or DirectX 10 as it's sometimes marketed as. And if you have that, you're good. So essentially, if you're still on Grandma's old Windows 98 machine, you may have some challenges in completing the series. But other than that, if you have, if you have something made in the last five or so years, you're alright. You don't e even need to worry about it. I guess, other than that, the only thing that might be worth mentioning is you need to be fluent in whatever language you choose to follow along in. And the reason I say that is because I'm going to be focusing on the engine development concept throughout the whole series. If you really don't know anything about programming, and you're struggling just with the programming concepts, you're going to end up missing out on a lot in this series, and you're really only hurting yourself, because you're missing a whole bunch of things you could be benefiting from. So, you know, it's not a requirement, but it's strongly recommended that you know you're competent with the code. And just to give you an idea of what I'm considering that, at least in terms of this series, here's a simple question for you. Given the language of your choice, could you sit down right now and code out Tetris? And if you have not already given 120% yes to that question, you're probably not fluent enough to not have the language get in the way to some extent at some point in the series. And that doesn't mean you can't follow along, no but you're just not going to benefit as much as you could have. And one final note, if you're someone who really doesn't know anything about programming, I strongly, strongly recommend you just go learn anything about code, because seriously, if you make even the slightest typo in this code and you don't understand how the programming works, well, you're going to end up being screwed, because you're not going to have any idea how to find the error or fix it, and yeah, that's why I'm really urging you, if you if you have any doubt of your ability with programming to follow this along, yeah, please, just go, go, go study for a bit. There's nothing wrong with it. It'll only help you in the long run. So yeah. Question 4. Hey Benny, is there anything that we should know about how you're going to be producing this series? And, well, yeah, there's two things I think you should take into consideration. First off, I'm going to be doing the series in segments. So first off, we're going to do the core engine mechanics. That's going to be all about just getting the basic, this is something that could potentially be a game engine set up. Then rendering mechanics is going to be all about, hey, this is how you actually create 3D, and so forth and so on. And I'm going to break it up like that, so that way... It's nice and focused and doesn't go all over the place. I think that's worth considering, so if you're watching me doing the render mechanics segment, no, I'm not going to suddenly jump, hey, here's how to do a whole bunch of physics stuff, you know? Yeah. And second thing I really think you should take into consideration, this is really why I brought up this question, is because I'm not going to be doing one series on this. I'm going to be doing two series on this. I'm going to be doing one series, it's sort of like the way I'm doing my RPG series, it's going to be sort of like a code long fashion, this is how you implement this feature, it's going to be building game engine like that, except, you know, they're not going to be in hour long segments, they're probably not even going to be as long as this video, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to try to keep it short, and they're all going to be focused on implementing some feature, and that's the key thing there, they're going to be focused on the implementation, not on the concept. So, let's say I'm doing a video on lighting mechanics. If you already know how lighting mechanics work, but you have no idea how it's done in code, that's why I'm doing it like that. You can follow along, see how the implementation's done, know everything about that, and not have to sit through me explaining, or re-explaining, really, how the concept works to you. And then there's the second video series, which is going to sort of have a companion video for maybe not every video, but a considerable number of them. And that's going to go more in-depth on it, and then give you not only how the concept works, but 
give you the knowledge to expand it and bring it into something of your own creation. So for example, in lighting mechanics. I'm planning on doing the Fong lighting model. That's all I'm really going to show in the video. You'll see how it's implemented, but in the companion video, I'm going to talk about not only the theory about why Fong lighting works, but also the strengths and weaknesses of the lighting model and how it relates to the engine as a whole. So maybe you'll realize, hey, you know, Fong lighting really is a terrible idea for what I'm planning on doing. And then I'll talk about some alternatives, like, hey, this is how you implement vertex lighting, this is how you implement blend lighting. And, well, maybe not implement, but here's the idea of it, and here's why you might want to use these instead, or how these might fit into your game engine. And that way, it gives you just a little bit more insight into the whole concept that the videos are going to be about, and hopefully you'll get the idea of how you can do some of the stuff with it on your own. So in, whoops, in summary, if you just go through the first main series, you're going to end up with a working game engine, and you're going to be able to use it to make games of your own if you really want to. If you go through the second series, you're going to end up with a game engine of your own, and you're going to end up with all the knowledge to build, to build on that, to realize, hey, you know, this is the game engine, but here are all its strengths and weaknesses, and here's how I can morph it into the game engine that I really want. That's the idea of the two-part series. And finally, the highly anticipated question five, which is actually a lot of questions in one. And it goes something like this. Are you going to implement this? And you can insert anything you want there. And the answer to that is probably not. When I was doing sort of the test creation of this engine, I had a lot of plans for some more advanced things, but the thing is, 3D game engine development is really just such an in-depth and complex subject. There's really no best way of doing things, and if I tried to cover everything, I wouldn't finish this series within my lifetime. So, yeah. I may cover a few more features in additional videos or additional series, but I'm just sort of trying to create a few key features, a few key things that I think will be most beneficial overall in game development. And I tried to strike that sort of perfect balance between complexity and utility. So. As you can see, this is sort of a result of just the rendering portion of it, and I'm personally happy with it. Maybe you want some more, and if you do, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll try to cover it at some other point in some other series, but yeah. That's, that's my stance on that. that. Although, please, still ask, because, again, 3D game engine development is this enormous subject, and I may have not have considered it, and it may be really beneficial to add it, but if you're asking for advanced shadow mapping or deferred rendering or some other really advanced concept, don't hold your breath. So with that, that concludes the big FAQ. Again, if that doesn't answer all of your questions, then please, feel free to ask below. Even if it's something I covered here, if you still are unsure about it, feel free to ask anyways, because, hey, maybe I missed something there. I I try my best to answer it, and if you're still unclear, I'll try my best to clarify. So, thank you, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video, where we will finally start creating it. Well, maybe not finally, but yeah, we'll start creating it. Thank you, see you then.